Hi everyone, my name is Alex, not Sebastian, but it's my brother. We're gonna introduce you next. So next, it's uh, if you know next, it's basically inspired by next, but instead of React, it's for Vue. So it's an open source project. So we really recommend you if you want to contribute on GitHub. And it's a minimalistic framework for several render Vue.js application. It's built on the top of Vue.js. All of the setting of the environment with Vue router, Vue loader is inside the project. The goal of Nuxt is to pre-configure an environment for friendly development Vue.js application. So it's pre-configured the server-side rendering with a Node.js server. We also add the ES6 translation with Babel, and we can use ECMAS script 6. We also add the code splitting with Webpack to just use the CSS and JavaScript we need to load on the browser. And of course, view loader. And I think the most important thi things with view loader, who is amazing when we develop with view, it's a dot view files. So dot view files allow us to write a single component in a single file. And that's the point we try to follow. It's to just be focused on writing dot view files. So I will let my brother introduce you some example to see how it works. Thanks. Hi, everyone. So I'm Sebastian. And um, I try to show you an example made with the Next.js. So I, and I'm going to show you with the slides. So first, we need to install Next with npm install. So you need a package.json, but I think everyone here knows how it works. So that's the minimum we have to start working with Nuxt. So we install it and we add a script called dev, which just launched Nuxt. So you don't have to install it globally. When we will run npm run dev, it will find in the node module directory and launch Nuxt. So we can focus on writing a view file, as my brother said. And this is a view file. So we have a template and we have a script. And basi basically, what it does is it's going to show hello world because we have this name variable, which is made to world here. So when I launch npm run dev, next we'll launch a server on localhost. And if we go to this page, what next will do, it will server render the application. So if you look at the source code, you will see directly hello world instead of the template. So as same as Next.js, the page directory is the main folder. And it's the main API, sorry. So every file inside the page directory, which is a view file, will be converted to a root. So index will be slash, and about.view will be slash about. So if we have subdirectory, it will be the same. W the challenge with Next.js was to work about async data, and this is what is the most difficult when working with Vue.js and server rendering. We try to find an easy way to work with async data, so when the, p when the page will be loaded by the browser, the asynchronous call will be made before rendering the, server, the page. So the source code will have already the data. So for example, I have this page, and I'm doing an asynchronous call with Axios, which is a module to make HTTP call from the server or the client. Here, I'm calling my API, and I'm returning first a promise. So Axio Axios is returning a promise when I'm calling it. So I'm calling it right here, and then I'm returning the real data. So next, we'll work with the data returned by the promised to set the comp component data. And then after, we can uh, show in the template the list of the posts here. But next, let you also work with the, the server data. 
So here, because we are overwriting the data method, we can work with async data, but we can also work with the data from the server. So we receive at the first argument a context, and in this context, there's a lot of variables you can use. Here, I'm using the rec, which is only available from the server side. This is the request object you have with Node.js. And here, I'm just checking if the rec exists, so I'm, I'm going to set the variable to the server, otherwise I'm set it, setting it to clients. So if I go to this page, I will have, the first time the page, the page will be loading, it will be server rendered, so it will display on the screen high from server, and if I'm navigating through the app, when I go back to this page, it will be loaded from the client. So rec will be undefined, and it will be displaying high from client. So this is all the data you can use in the context. And for example, let's say I'm fetching some asynchronous data, but I have an error. I can call directly the error method with a static code and a message, and it will display the error page. So you don't have to update your template. You can already call this method. Or let's say you want an authenticated route. So if the user is not connected, you can also use rec.session, for example, to know if the user is connected. And if he's not connected, you can redirect, redirect it to the right path. So let's say you have an auth route, which is only display when the user is connected. You can check if he's connected here I'm using the store that I'm going to talk about later. But you can redirect it to the right page. And this will work also from the server side. So if it goes directly to this page from the server side, it will be an HTTP redirect to the slash login page. So this code is shared between client and server. Uh, wait, I'm going to drink some more. Sorry. Actually, the difference between Next and Next is we try to make Next customizable with a next.config.js file. And I think every big application needs dynamic root. So we have this option that you can set in the next.config.js file. And it's following the same convention as view router. So if you already used view, view router, you know how to use how to add roots to Next. So you just set a path. Here it's a dynamic path. And we point, we link to the page, the component page, which is page dot slash underscore user. Why underscore? Because with Next, you can define hidden page by just adding an underscore to this page in your, uh, in your directory. So Next will not generate the root for the user page. It will only generate the dynamic root for this one. We also had the option to use Vue plugin, like Vue Fire, for example. Um, you just have to set the plugins key in the next.config.js file and point to your plugin file, which uh, is setting the module. It's requiring the module. And just, I think that's most of the module are like this, just calling Vue, Vue use and requiring the module. Here, I'm also adding the build vendor. So by setting this, I'm making sure that it will be included in the vendor bundle built by Webpack. So it, it will be only required once. So uh, head elements. When working with a server rendered application, head elements and meta tags are really important. And we're using view meta to let you define meta tags easily with Next. In the next.config.js file, it will be the default meta tags and title. So here, we will have a default title for every page and a meta tag char set UTF-8. But if I want to set a specific uh, title, let's say for the page index for the slash root, I can add the head key to the component and set the title. Here I'm not showing it, but if you want to use data you fetch asynchronously, you just have to make the head key as a function. And you can use this, which is the context of the component, and use the data. So it could be this point dot title. 
Uh, Nux uses Vuexter as well, uh, but it doesn't include it directly. It will include it if you create a file in store, an index file in the do store folder, and this is how it looks. If you, have the, if you want to work with Vuex, you can just create this page. So I'm just recurring, importing Vuex, Vuex, and creating the store. So this is a simple store with a counter and a, mut a simple mutation called increment. And in my page, I can use the store directly, and it works. So here, it will display the counter, which is zero at first. And if I click on it, it will increment it. And you can use it in different pages, of course, and the store will be shared. That's the point of UX. And uh, of course, it will be server rendered. So instead of this uh, template, it will be zero at the beginning when loading the page. Uh, when we're creating a big application, you might have a navigation bar that you want to include in every page, same as a footer and you don't want to include it in every of your page. So we created this special page called underscore app that you can create, and then inside you can specify some component that will be shared across all your pages. And to include Next, you just have to use Next container and Next. Next will render the page. Next container is basically the div ID app that we have, we're using to uh, instantiating the app, instantiating Nuxt. So here, this my nav bar here will be shared across all the pages. And I'm also including the style, which will be shared across all the pages as well. So it's useful for having a global CSS or including bootstrap as well. And more functionalities, but I don't think I have time to talk about all of these, but quickly root transitions. So Next already use the transition tag, the component. So you can just specify your transition key in your page and it will be uh, using this transition. And static folder, we have a static folder where you can put all your static files. Uh, you can customize the error page. Uh, we have also testing with JSDOM and Ava. Uh, you can set environment variables and more configuration. But I don't, when I'm using a project, I don't really like to use directly the binary. I would like to configure more, and that's why next you can use it programmatically. You can require it like this, just require next, and you can say new next, these options are all the options we saw before in the nux.config.js file. And then when uh, the dot then is when Nuxt has built all your files and your page files. And after you can use nux.render root. I think the best example is to work, to use Nuxt as an express middleware. So you can require Nuxt as we show, as we seen before. We create an Express with uh, an application with Express, and we use Next.render to render all the pages that are not matched by by Express before, and it's exactly the same as launching Next. So you have more uh, possibilities by using it as middleware, but you can start just by using Next, and when you want to add more possibility, like an API or minif minifying or gzipping the your content, you can use it as middleware. For server deployment, um, you just have to use Next Build or Next Start. Of course, you can use it programmatically as well with Next.Build or Next. Dot, not Next.Start, but by launching your server. And it will minify everything uh, with the production environment variable. And uh, Next Start, we just start the server, no build, so it will be pretty fast on when launch. Uh, I would like to introduce you. I think a new way of making website. We call it serverless deployment because we don't have a better name yet. Uh, and this is this was the idea of my brother. We used to work with Jekyll, and he asked me, "Is it possible to use Next as Jekyll but still using view files?" And that's where we introduce <laughs> Next Generate. So every page you have will be generated, but server rendered. It means that each index file 
will be generated. So the source code will be good for Google with the SEO. And this, you can imagine something like, uh, that's what we're doing with our website for the documentation. When we push on master, we have a hook on GitHub, we, we're, which are calling Amazon Lambda, which, call, which is cloning the depot, launching Next Generate, and pushing on GitHub page. And this, with Next Generate, you don't need a server. You can host your web application on a CDN or GitHub page. So it's like a cache, and uh, you don't have any security problems anymore, except the client-side security. So that's, that was Next.js. You can check the website. It's not complete right now, but you can already test it, and it's made with Next.js. Thank you. Integrated with Next is like, you know, the full package, it's yeah. like more complete. Right? Yeah, that's why we're yeah. trying to do that. Uh, you can use Next to generate static website. Yeah, yeah this is awesome, thanks. <laughs> thanks for making view. <laughs> <laughs> um, my question is, as now Google, you know, um, knows how to curl JS, yeah. do you think there is really like a future for things like server-side rendering? Okay, that's a great question, because I focused on saying about the SEO, but what about server rendering? Why it's so powerful is that with your computer, you don't have to wait for the JavaScript to be loaded to have a feedback from the page you're asking. So if I'm going to a page for a profile, I will already have the, the HTML render it, so I can already see the page before interacting it with interacting with it. It means that uh, it's a faster feedback for the user, and for mobile, you won't have a blank page and loading the app, because the internet is slower. So instant feedback is the key with several rendered applications. Uh, I think, I don't know if I answer your question. That's pretty clear, thanks. Um, how you uh, thought about progressive web apps, for instance, the app chain model? <laughs> Uh, that's like actually that? an issue. We are, that's an issue which, which is still open because we are trying to find a way to that Next can create a progressive web app for you easily. But uh, we are looking into it after the, the first release of the stable version. But it will be one of our main goal that every application made with Next is, will be a progressive web application. And do you have an approximate date for the first release? Uh, actually, it should have been before these conferences, but... Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know how it is when you're developing something. You have new ideas, new issue. So I hope that with my brother, we could uh, have the stable release at the end of this year. For Christmas, yeah. <laughs> like a nice Christmas present. Thank you very much. Hey, 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 hey,